But there is something else I would like to mention about his eating pattern, which might cause some problems down the line, or I can see it anyways. If he's doing this throughout the day over and over and over and over and over again, uh, I definitely see problems with that. Wow. Schmeckt gut, dieses Butter. Ja. Mm. Gutes Qualität. It's good quality, really. So, in this video, we are going to be uh, going over blood steel. So, apparently, this guy is uh, what I eat in a day, autumn 2024. Uh, I have heard that this guy eats like raw. So, raw meat, not too sure. Let's see what he has to say and what he eats. <laughs> What's up guys, Tord here, and uh, welcome to my what I eat in a day video. Now this video has been requested so many times, it's been a long time since my last one. It's kind of hard uh, finding good quality food in the area I am in right now, so this is not uh, perfect what I eat in a day video, what I would normally eat. This is temporary and uh, pretty uh, situational as I am uh, visiting my grandma in Germany right now. Since you guys were so curious, uh, I guess I'll just show you. This is the first meal of today. I got some raw beef here from my local butcher. Okay, so in terms of beef, um, I think it's one of the good ones for min-maxing. Uh, by min-maxing, I basically mean like optimal, optimal health. I think uh, basically you want to be eating ruminants, preferably. Um, if, if you want to like really, really min-max health, and that has to do with um, lower deuterium and lower uh, polyunsaturated fat content, higher um, saturated fat content. So that's one, of, that's one of the big things. So, okay, I would say that's pretty good. And this is raw goat's milk from uh, a goat farm that's 30 minutes away from here by bike which is so uh in terms of milk i'm a little iffy on milk i don't think it's a bad thing when you're a kid uh when, during adolescence while you're still growing because it's a pretty good thing when it comes to basically increasing your growth factor uh gro the amount of growth factors that you're giving yourself so like you can definitely um grow a hell of a lot more but i don't necessarily think this is good after adolescence and it's not really that big of a deal technically you're not really you're not spiking insulin that much but you are causing extra glycation because galactose will cause glycation it's sort of like a double-ended glycation instead of a single-ended so usually when you eat like for instance meat um, you'll, you'll have some excess amino acids, those get converted into glucose and then that like that can cause glycation, right? Um, I don't necessarily think that's, that's the best. I, I'm really, I personally am not really that big of a fan of, um, uh, raising insulin. I, I do think that it possibly does sometimes need to be raised, but I don't, I definitely do not like raising it by much. I, I, uh, I completely avoid trying to ever raise it. So... This, on the other hand, this will definitely raise insulin, and this is because lactose will get converted into galactose and glucose, and I don't, once again, I don't think that's a good, that's a good thing. Um, yeah, but galactose, galactose will definitely, uh, has some glycation potential, and I, I think uh, the glycation potential is probably similar to that of glucose, and that's just because of the um, ring structure, literally. It's just a, it's a six carbon ring, except it's like a different configuration of glucose. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to show that, but, um, hopefully you can sort of see what I mean in terms of why, um, it causes glycation. I think it has to do with the fact that it's basically, uh, hexagonal. It's a hexagonal ring. Um, those usually do seem to have more stable structures. Uh, usually though, if it's like a, if it's fructose, for instance, uh, fructose is a five membered ring, like furan, uh, furan sort of ring, then those are much, much, I think those, the reason why they're so much more prone to glycation has to do with the fact that they're five membered ring. Wow. I'm getting really complicated. I shouldn't do that. Uh, but hopefully you can sort of see what I mean. So I'm not necessarily a big fan of it, but I don't think it's necessarily too bad. Which is pretty cool. And this is um homemade apple juice my grandma makes she has apples in her garden so she makes her own apple juice which is super nice 
Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not a fan of uh, apple juice at all. I'm I'm a fan of no juice. I'm a fan of water. That's <laughs> that's basically it. I don't necessarily think uh, doing any sort of that this this kind of stuff like apple juice. I don't think that's too good. It's it's really really concentrated sugar. That is high fructose content, high glucose content. You're also removing the fiber in the process, or most likely anyways. If you're keeping the fiber in this case, technically speaking, it's actually good because you want to hinder the absorption of the glucose and the fructose and all this other stuff. You want to be hindering all, all of these plant phytotoxins you want to be hindering. So in that specific sense, fiber is helpful. But I, as a general rule, I'm... I'm completely against um, juices. I have a video on that. Actually, I don't even know if that video is out. Yeah, that video will probably be out by now. It's uh, basically water, the importance of water, why humans need water, and then it says like why humans need water as the thumbnail. And then the, t the title I think is like why you should stop drinking coffee, tea, juice, and soda. Uh, that video explains it a whole lot more than I will explain it right now. But to keep it really simple, uh, you're causing dehydration and you're also spiking fructose content, which that's actually completely, that's a completely different video. Um, that just has to do with glycation. Glycation is not a good thing, by the way. If you want to go see what Alzheimer's looks like or any of these people who have serious brain problems like that, they are the best examples of extremely high amounts of advanced glycation end products. Even look at my, um, my video on, I think it's like why veganism doesn't work. It's a review video. Um, you can literally see adult fruitarian. The guy can't speak. He can't even form coherent sentences. He, he's speaking so slow. He's barely able to form coherent sentences. It's his speech is so slurred and slowed. It's bad. So hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully you can see why I don't, I'm not a big fan of juice. And this is, uh, some honey I bought from, uh, market uh, a couple weeks ago and uh but i don't think it's raw so when it comes to honey it's basically the same thing than uh, apple juice it's basically just fructose except it i guess it doesn't have the fiber in this case i'm going to assume that it doesn't have the fiber but for the most part the main thing about it is that it's just really high fructose content in fact it's sort of similar to that of high fructose corn syrup i never really thought about that that's a little weird maybe i should make a video on that um yeah so i really once again i don't necessarily think this is, this is healthy uh fructose just gets processed straight by the liver that gets converted into white adipose tissue and i don't necessarily think on carnivore you need any of this at all Technically speaking, it's good because it won't <laughs> raise insulin, I guess. that Yeah, technically speaking, it won't raise insulin unless the, there's high glucose content in it, which is good because fructose doesn't raise insulin. So in that specific sense, it's good, but it's bad because anything that usually gets directly processed by the liver, if it's not like glucose or fatty acid, and it's like fructose like this, it gets directly processed. And that, I think uh, that that whole thing is not good for your liver at all. Your liver basically sees it as to toxic. So I, I'm not a big fan of this. I'm definitely not a big fan of this at all. Well, and once again, this is just more advanced glycation end products. So, so uh, hmm. I don't know why this guy, I feel like this guy looks a little bit like, like me. It's weird. Uh, he also has a little tattoo here. Roman numerals. I think this is 1127. Oh, this is his birth date, isn't it? Or maybe this is the day he got it tattooed. I'm not sure. I can't read this. I'm not too sure if this is. Pretty sure this is 11. Yeah, it has to be. 1127, 20, 2021, maybe? What I do is. Um... I use my hands when I eat. Uh, this is how you're supposed to eat, obviously. <laughs> so I just do this and... Uh... For anybody who hasn't eaten raw meat before, by the way, it's very difficult to, to chew it in comparison to that of um, cooked meat. Much, much more difficult. So, yeah. Obviously very thin too, so... For most people who start trying to do this, this is very, very difficult for them. Personal experience, uh, I sometimes I sometimes eat meat raw, but for the most part, I usually have my meat like my like very, very 
uh, rarely cooked, very, very rare. It's called blue, I think, or blue. I have it cooked like that. So yeah, I, ba I basically barely cook it. I, I like it mostly raw in the middle or almost completely raw in the middle and then the outside cooked. You know what's crazy is I've heard that they're literally trying to disincentivize. The government right now over there is trying to disincentivize buying meat by making it like more expensive or by doing these other like indirect measures is to me it's crazy they, i'm really amazed by that like they're gonna really screw up their population if they do this but i mean i guess they have no idea they probably don't have any idea i think they're just ignorant but for the most part this is this will definitely screw them up if they end up trying to restrict prices and try to prevent people from buying this basically that'll really really <laughs> cause a lot of problems down the line as if there isn't already quite a bit of them. Pretty cool what you can get from Lidl. Now I still... Lidl? Oh my god. What the hell? I've been there. I was at a couple Lidl's before. Um, yeah, because I was in Frankfurt, Germany. So I was also in different other parts, but it was definitely in Frankfurt. Like, I don't care if it's uh, heated. It says it's heated, but uh, I don't know how much, how many degrees. But um, look how much saturated fat it has per 100 grams. Like I just crave so much uh, fat that uh, I really don't know what to do here in Germany. So uh, because I crave raw bone marrow, that's what I've always been eating. That was my fat source all the time. Raw bone marrow and uh, obviously the fat from the steak. I'm trying not to overdo it with this because it's probably pasteurized to death. When it comes to, okay, so he's doing going for the milk again or something along those lines. I think it's maybe yogurt. I have no idea. As a general rule, once again, I'm not a big fan of glycation and this is, this is uh, usually what that sort of stuff has. Not a big fan of it. The whole galactose and glucose thing. Um, I'm definitely not a fan of that. But there is something else I would like to mention about his eating pattern, which might cause some problems down the line or I can see it anyways. So the way he's eating, I don't know if you've noticed, but he didn't really have that big of a, so originally at the very beginning here, right? He didn't actually have that much meat. Like this is not that much meat, in my opinion. Anyways, if you've, if you've seen my, what I eat in a day, it's, um, in fact, it's actually more than that. I didn't even put all of the footage so i eat a lot like a lot of meat and if you're looking at how much he's actually getting right now so he has for instance just looking at this right now he has steak milk apple juice and honey that's not a lot of meat i don't see that much of a fat source uh indirectly he's also doing something that's kind of i definitely can see problems with this in the future He's eating throughout the day, and you might say, well, it's fine because he's carnivore, right? Well, he's doing a modified version of carnivore because he's having all of this, this, for instance, this yogurt stuff, right? And in the process, he will raise insulin. But the problem is, once again, the Randall cycle comes into play. If you're mixing fat from the meat with the glucose, in this case, of the dairy, it's not that much, but it is... It is a little bit, and if he's doing this throughout the day over and over and over and over and over again, uh, I definitely see problems with that. I can definitely see problems with that. So whether or not he knows it, I don't know, but that's definitely problems. I, if it's only two times throughout the day, uh, we'll look at the rest of the video eventually. If it's only two times that he's doing this, then maybe it's not that big of a deal. I don't necessarily know the time frame in between as well. Uh, if you're interested, you can check out my ketosis video. I think it's called like efficient ketosis or I called it efficient ketosis in my editing for my editor, but I can't remember <laughs> what I called it. Um, yeah, so I think it's, no, it's ketosis heals the heart and brain. Yeah, that's what it was. So if you're interested, you can go check out that video and you'd sort of understand where I'm going here 
when it comes to like why it's really important, I think, to be in ketosis. And I think in this case, he actually isn't in ketosis. He is getting a lot of the vitamins and minerals and all this other stuff, not inflammatory problems that he's dealing with, but he is dealing with that, which I think will be a problem down the line. But it won't it won't be as prominent because he's definitely not spiking it as much as other people do, I think, but he, he is spiking it a little bit. He is biking in Germany, I guess. I did a lot of biking in Germany myself, so. <laughs> Raw eggs? Yep, yeah, okay. Maybe his eggs are, his, the eggshells over there are harder. They probably are, because I know that if the chicken is better, given better nutrition, they don't have the same problem. So eggs, I don't think they're that big of a deal. I think they're actually really good. When it comes to protein content, definitely very, very high. Highest that you can possibly get. There's literally nothing with the higher amino acid content, probably besides whey, whey protein, but <laughs> uh, not really much nutritional value out of that besides the amino acid content. Otherwise though, I think that this is a much, much better option. I think, uh, I think eggs are definitely the way to go. Really, really, basically they have every single thing that you need. So definitely very, very healthy. But once again, this is throughout the day as a carnivore. And like if he mixes in that milk over and over and over again, I can definitely see problems occurring. But if he isn't mixing in the milk or all this other stuff, then I think it might be. I, I don't think that it'll be as big of a deal. Wow. Schmeckt gut, dieses Butter. Ja. Mm. Gute Qualität. It's good quality, really. Schmeckt so süß. Yeah, so when it, yeah, this is, I think that's healthier. I think this is a better option. In terms of your dairy, if you want, like this is, I wouldn't necessarily consider butter, butter dairy as much. And this is because the... The dairy content in butter is much lower than that of like yogurt or the milk or any anything of that sort. So I would say this is probably better, personally. <laughs> it, this is where you will get your energy though, because you're basically getting your fatty acid from this. So yeah, overall I'd say pretty healthy. Um, yeah, that's about it. Oh, okay, he's drinking something else. Apple juice or what? Apple juice again? What is this? I have no idea what this is. But if, it's, if, if it isn't water, yeah. If it isn't water, then I wouldn't really recommend it. And once again, uh, if you're looking for optimal, like really, really optimal nutrition, then just stick with water. There's really no need to add anything else, especially not coffee, tea, juice, or soda. Definitely wouldn't recommend those. Those are definitely dehydrating. You don't want your water being stolen or your amino acids, in this case, your protein being stolen because that's not helpful. So this is blood steel. Um, I think what he eats is actually pretty good overall, definitely. Uh, he's sort of similar to Anvo in this case where he does add in, in honey, for instance, and I wouldn't re necessarily recommend in honey. Uh, I wouldn't recommend any sort of like uh, glycation events occurring. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of glycation. I think that is one of the primary causes of aging. The only problem is there are two main culprits that I see as the main causes for aging. And it's either one, the glycation of glucose, or two, it's re glucose pre producing more reactive oxygen species. Now, even if glucose doesn't produce more reactive oxygen species and you just remove this, that means that glycation is that big of a factor. So I wouldn't recommend this once again. Um, not really ideal. You don't want more reactive oxygen species. You don't want more glycation occurring. You don't want uh, basically inflammatory signals because this is, you're still giving yourself an inflammatory response when you eat meat. It's just substantially less, like ridiculously less. It's not even comparable. So hopefully you could sort of understand where I'm going here. I don't necessarily think there's a way to completely mitigate this whole process of aging. Not that I'm aware of, at least when you look at this from a purely chemical um, standpoint. But as a general rule, I definitely do think that this is um, his his diet is far healthier. So, yeah, 
Once again, thanks for watching. If you found the video helpful and informative, please like, share, subscribe, comment down below because it really does help the channel grow. And if you're interested in seeing all of my videos ahead of time, please click the join button down below where you can see all of my videos ahead of time as well as support me personally. And if you're interested in all the videos that I have, then just go check my playlists out because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of playlists. <laughs> so once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.